Hey everyone, Gaming Noodle, back with a new episode. A new episode, uh, I blurred my words together. I remember that sword. My bones still bear the marks. How could I forget? Oh boy, it's a bit awkward. Oswald. One of our victims. You killed me, and another one. This is creepy. Oswald, I've been waiting. Waiting for you to fall into the abyss here. Waiting for you to finally feel the queen. Okay, so it looks like there's a lot of disgruntled people here that we've killed. You have killed many. You have killed so many. Shut up. <laughs> That's all you can say, shut up. An arsehole till the end. Well, we got. Did we die last time? Well, uh, what was it? A Hulia or something? Yeah, it was, wasn't it? And now we're in the underworld. So, Elvin told you. Brom? Who exactly am I? Please, I must know. Melvin once told me that he abducted you from a house in the wilderness far from any civilization. The only people there were you, a dying man, and a young mother. What happened to my parents? I heard that they had died. As cruel as it is, I was in favor of it at the time. We've sent many humans to the netherworld, and we do feel grief over in your case, it was extremely unfortunate. I do not want your pity. It wouldn't help me at this point anyway. Plus, you don't deserve it. My hands are already stained with blood. Indeed. I don't have anything worth pitying. See, now he's talking sense. Oswald Cobblepot. The trembling won't stop. It's not that I fear death, but I had no one to love, and no one to return it in kind, to have lived an empty life, like there was no point in being born. That is what I fear most. Melvin, had I not known your true feelings towards me, I would have been satisfied to die in servitude. All in your honor. But now, I have absolutely nothing. Hmm, I almost feel bad for him. Almost. A bird? Here? How strange. I don't know how. Now, if that's the same, if that's the same bird from Gwendolyn's story, that's Gwendolyn's sister. But when I saw it, I felt hope. If I could only see it again, I might be able to find out for sure. I will search for it. Perhaps it will give me the strength to keep living. Right? I think it was her sister. And who killed her sister? Uh, Griselda. It was a Black Knight, wasn't it? If that's correct, then yeah, I guess he does know her. That's what he's talking about here. But yeah, we've uh, we've ended up in the Netherworld with those Beetlejuice tentacles coming out the ground. Uh, always a pleasant sight. I love everything spooky and ghostly in all the games I play, no matter what it is. If it's a Mario game or this game or something, uh, show me the quickest way to the haunted house and I'll be smiling. Look at all these bones. Oh, goodness. That was easy enough. Stage clear. 
but yeah, so it looks like we're on, we're truly on our own now because uh, we only have one person that we kind of uh, looked up to and took orders from, and that was Melvin, and he bit the dust, and he laughed in our face as well. Uh, he truly is a scumbag, but he's dead now, so it's fine. But now we have to figure out, as Oswald, what we're going to do with ourselves. Because we really do have no, he, he has no purpose really. He's, uh, he's very powerful, he's a very powerful uh, knight, but he's got no, he's got no aim, no focus, so it's all wasted. And now he's crying that he never had love in his life, like, I guess true love or something. Now, that could be taken both ways, either on a, on a personal level, like, you know, like a girlfriend, or perhaps as in family members, because he's just, you know, Melvin obviously didn't care about him, and so he's he's very sad about that. He feels betrayed, I guess, and lost. Put yourself in his shoes, you'd feel the same, but again, it's very hard for me to put myself in his shoes because he is such an arsehole. I mean, as soon as you get down into this place, you meet those corpses that basically tell you I'm down here because of you. You killed me. I hate you for it. You know, you killed, and that, <laughs> the other corpse was like, you've killed so many, many people, and he's just like, shut up. It's like, what? At least have some kind of remorse. Then maybe I, you know, feel a bit sorry for you, even if you don't care. You know, he, he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't need pity, and that's, I guess that's fair enough. Like, he's not self-pitying in a way. He knows he's done wrong, I guess, maybe. Well, that's what I get from it. And if that's true, then it, it's one step closer to him being a bit more likable. It's always good, guys and girls, when you can admit to your faults. It's, uh, I think it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's an attractive quality. Like, it's a good quality. I, I just wouldn't go as far as saying it's an attractive quality. But it's a very good quality to have when you could admit your mistakes instead of, you know, always making excuses. For your for yourself, but let's not go too much off on a tangent with that one. Let's get on with the story. We need to get the hell out of hell, and the only way to do that is through Odette, right? I wonder what she's gonna say when she sees us. But uh, I don't think it's gonna be that easy because we have oh, it's a Halia. Easy peasy, Japanesey, lemon squeezy. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be so easy leaving the Netherworld because of all that that deal that Melvin made. I think it's slightly unfair that he gets to make a deal on your life without your um, what's the word I'm looking for? Consent? Yeah, without your consent. That shouldn't be allowed, but apparently it is. And he never really told us the truth about that that cipher we're using. He just, I guess, he just gave it to us and said, "Here, go kill stuff, like dragons and shit." And now the Holly are coming back saying, "Ooh, your life belongs to us now." So we can't be having that. Although, to be honest. I don't know if seeing a little blue bird is enough to give him any sort of encouragement to go on. Like, I'm just saying, if this was me and then Melvin was the only thing in my life and then he died after laughing in my face telling me I ain't shit, I'd probably not want to do anything and just kind of give up. And I, and I wouldn't suddenly think, oh, I need to... I need to follow that bluebird. That's the only thing I have right now. Doesn't really make sense to me, but hey, this is a fancy game. 
I can deal with it. It's not too hard for me to believe. Suspension of disbelief and all that. Always good to grow some grapes out of the nutrients of uh, dead corpses. Gives it that extra kick. I think we've, we're gonna we're gonna go straight to a boss battle now, aren't we? We're gonna go straight to the end. Eat up, get that chest. God, how much seeds do I have? I need to sell all of this stuff. Let's see where's the oh the boss is right nearby. Let's get to it. The Black Sword, Chapter Four, Act Four, Netherworld Shrine. was a tantrum, wasn't it? Now, no, this is a tantrum. Tis useless. That sword contains my power, as per the contract. It will never harm me. Many have pledged their souls to me in exchange for power in life. But not one of them has been able to interest me. But you, Oswald, you are different. It seems you will be able to entertain me. But if you wish to defy me, I shall need to discipline you. I will scrape out your bowels until you beg me for mercy. Interesting. I like how this Queen Odette talks. She talks about people being so uncivilized when just a second ago she's talking about scraping your bowels out and torturing you. Very interesting character indeed. And uh, I also like how we're now fighting uh, the Demon Lord Odin in the Netherworld. It just the picture, it's so picturesque. I just love everything about this. The character designs, set against the backdrop. The colors are so good. So, so good. And I really like, I don't know, I just really like that cape of Odin's with the stars. I don't know why. Something about it. And I also like the visor that he has. It's very menacing and he puts the visor on. But uh, this, uh, this fight shouldn't be too bad. I've actually leveled up quite a lot. Uh, 18, uh, 18 and 12, that's not bad. I'm, I've already made quick work of him actually. Look, he's already under half HP. Very easy telegraphed moves that can be uh, avoided. Just try not to be a fool. And there you have it. Uh, looks like we're gonna kill Gwendolyn's dad. Or almost, we'll, we'll see if we kill him or not. But. Uh, 
hey, we are fighting him. Does he know that... No, yeah, he knows that um, this is the father of the girl that he fancied. You know, Gwendolyn. He likes Gwendolyn, but... I guess he just loves taking orders more from people. That's all he does, he just... Someone says, go kill something, and he just says, yeah, okay. Got nothing better to do. Might as well. Hmm. Oh, this guy's dead. This, this fight is over. Come on. Almost. And good night. Okay, um, enjoy the story. I'll see you next episode. Lay down your sword. I accept defeat and shall leave this place. Do you really think I would let you survive after we have fought? Let me show you that naivety has no place in battle. Wait. Is this how you show your loyalty to the Fairy Queen? No. I am no longer associated with that place. You are in the netherworld. Yet you still live. I shall not inquire as to how you ended up here. Shadow Knight, if you desist, I shall take you from the netherworld. I know of a path that lets me freely come and go from this realm. Or would you rather become the Queen's servant and rot here? Is that what you wish? I have no one to pledge myself to. Your terms? <laughs>